from Four Season Foraging here to talk to you today about common herbs of summer. So before I get into the video, just want to say thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell for notifications. It helps me out a lot. Today I'm coming to you from an oak savanna. So this is a really beautiful habitat as you can probably see. There's lots of flowers and herbs and different plants all growing around here. And the reason I chose this spot is because of the diversity of plants that grow here. So there'll be some good herbs that I can show you. But I just wanted to make the note that oak savannas are a threatened habitat. They're really rare because of the decimation of prairies that happened during colonization. So just be extra aware of that if you happen to be foraging in a spot like this, that you want to be very conscientious of the sensitive ecosystem. So the plants I'm going to show you today are more common plants. They're things that you can find growing in a lot of places. So I definitely recommend picking them from, you know, somewhere that's less sensitive than this. And I also just wanted to point out that this here is in a public park. And as far as I know, there's no park that allows harvesting of herbs. Some allow like fruits and mushrooms and nuts and that kind of thing, but not like green plants. So just also be aware of that as you're out foraging, you know, look up the legality in your area. So yeah, just keep in mind the legality of what you're doing so that you don't get in trouble. Um, so yeah, when you're foraging herbs, usually, as far as I know, you always have to do it on private property, either your property or somewhere where they give you permission to do it. So uh, let's start talking about the herbs. Look at all these pretty plants. Okay, so I'm going to show you a few herbs, but first I just want to clarify what is an herb. So the term herb kind of has two meanings. It can be either a non-woody plant or a plant that has medicinal uses or culinary uses as a seasoning. So today I'm combining the two and going to talk about herbaceous plants, so no trees or shrubs or vines that have some medicinal use or some culinary use as a seasoning. So this plant right next to me here, the purple flowers, is wild bergamot. The Latin name is Monarda fistulosa. And this here is one of my very favorite herbs. I say that about like every herb and every flower, but I really mean it with this one. So this one here, I just want to say, first of all, it has some relatives that are used similarly. And the one I'm most familiar with is Monarda didiyama, which is sometimes called bee balm. And it looks basically exactly the same as this, except it's larger, the flowers are larger, and they're red or scarlet in color rather than this pale purple. So bee balm is a really great medicinal and edible herb. It has a flavor profile that's really similar to oregano. So if you just pick the leaves and put it in pasta or salad or pizza or those kind of dishes, it's super tasty. You can also use the flowers. Those are edible. And when you're using it medicinally, you actually want the whole flowering tops. So. Usually what I do is like snip it off somewhere around here or maybe a little farther down so I get some of the leaves and the stem and the flower all together and it'll actually just keep growing. It'll split and keep growing after that. So as long as you don't take too much, it doesn't really hurt the plant. And medicinally, wild bergamot has a lot of uses. So it's a great antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal. So it's used for treating colds and fevers and flus. It's great at reducing fevers. So it's a diaphoretic, which basically means that it makes you sweat and helps you break the fever. 
It's also really good for your gums. So I've seen it recommended to use as a mouthwash. So especially if you have gingivitis or tender gums, it will help improve the strength of your gums. It's also great for menstruation. So uh, if you're someone with painful periods, it helps relieve the cramps and some of the symptoms around PMS too, like bloating. I could just go on. Like it has so many uses and it's such a great herb. Really, I think something that people should have in their first aid kits. It's great for burns and scalds too, so it can be used topically as well. It's also, uh, it helps relieve tension and helps you sleep. It's a nerving is what it's called. It kind of relaxes and tones your nerves. So yeah, lots of uses for this and something I really recommend that you become familiar with. How do you identify wild bergamot? So I'm going to give you a few pointers here. I'm not going to go into great detail because I'm covering several herbs in this video. So wild bergamot is in the mint family and the mint family has a square stem and opposite leaves. So if you look at the leaves here, you can see that one leaf comes off directly opposite the other, like a V. And the best way to tell if it has a square stem, well, it's kind of two ways. You can roll it between your fingers and you can feel like the edges. The other way is to cut it, just take a cross section, you know, cut it off and look at it and you'll be able to see if it's square in shape or not. You'll need like fairly sharp scissors or a knife so it doesn't deform the shape as you're cutting it, but that should give you a clear idea. And then besides the square stem and opposite leaves, mints have these kind of tubular flowers. These here are very tubular. Some of them are, you know, a little shorter and fatter. They come in all different sizes and shapes, but basically the flowers have a top lip and a bottom lip and they're kind of shaped like a tube. These ones here, as I mentioned, are violet. They're like a light purple. They come out in early summer to midsummer. Midsummer is usually the height of their flowering. And they like grow in this dome pattern. So you can see like there's this kind of naked dome in the middle with this ring of flowers around it. And then the flowers will keep flowering until this dome is just completely naked, if that makes sense. So these are like at various stages of flowering. This one's almost completely naked and like this one as well. So here's a close up of the flowers and there's a bumblebee, which is why it's sometimes called bee balm because the bees love it and we love the bees. Anyway, <laughs> here's a close up of the flower. So you can see it has those tubular flowers like I was talking about and they kind of grow in this dome. I'll do a close up of the leaves as well. It's really easy to see that each leaf grows opposite each other. And also when you're looking closely like this, you can see the leaves are serrated. And all of the leaves grow off of the stem. So there's no leaves that come straight out of the ground with this one. And you can't really see it that well, but this is a square stem. You can see kind of some of the ridges, but it's kind of hard to tell unless you're touching it. It's the square stem. So growing next to me here is another one of my all-time favorite herbs. I'm going to say that about every single plant I talk about today. But really this herb is great. It's called mugwort. The Latin name is Artemisia vulgaris. And this is an introduced species, so it's Origins are from Europe, I believe, and it's considered invasive in some parts. So this is a plant that's definitely fine to pick ecologically. You do want to be careful. I've actually seen it in this area doused in poison. The reason, the way I could tell is that everything around it was green and lush and just the mugwort and the things like right next to it are like drooping and brown and looking very sickly. That's, you know, a bit ironic that the park board doesn't want you to pick this stuff, but they'll douse it in poison, so, eh. Anyway, this has lots of great medicinal uses, and it's also a great culinary herb. So I've used this actually to make beer, and that was super tasty. The term mugwort means mug plant, and that comes from its traditional use as a beer herb. So instead of hops, this was used to flavor and bitter beer. It can also be used in just sodas, if that's something you're into, 
or just making a tea. You can also put this in a smoke blend and it's relaxing and calming and has a great flavor. Just keep in mind if you do put it in a smoke blend, don't use tobacco with it because it does something bad, I can't remember now. You can use it to help break a tobacco addiction. So if you are a tobacco smoker and you're trying to stop that habit, transitioning into smoking mugwort may help you with that. Just again, don't mix it with the tobacco. Besides all that, it is great medicinally. So it's a great uterine tonic, something that works really well for menstrual pains and PMS and bloating and that kind of thing. It's also a relaxant and a nervine. So like I was saying, it helps you sleep, it calms you down, it eases anxiety. It's a digestive plant. So the bitter properties in it help with your digestive system and help you absorb food better. One note of caution about mugwort is that it should be avoided by people who are pregnant, especially early in the pregnancy. It has been used as an abortifacient, so there's a chance of it causing a miscarriage. So you just want to be really careful about that. So how do you identify mugwort? Mugwort is in the Artemisia genus, so it's closely related to plants like wormwood and sweet annie and wood sage, I think it's called. There's lots of them, lots of medicinal and culinary plants in that genus. So it looks similar to a lot of those, but a, the smell of it is one good way to tell it apart. If you crush up the leaf and smell it, it almost has like a cola smell. Like it's hard to describe, but it smells kind of sweet and herby and just really nice and good. So once you become familiar with it, the smell will be a great identification feature. But if you just look at the plant, it has these divided leaves and they are alternate on the stem so there's just one leaf coming off at each point on the stem and there's no flowers out yet but when they do come out they're very inconspicuous they're just, just these little like kind of greenish like light green little circular flowers that will just, like grow in these little circular bundles they're not super showy or obvious or anything but it will help you identify them. Probably the closest Artemisia, the Artemisia that looks most like this is Wormwood. And Wormwood has, uh, the leaves are more like rounded. This is, the divisions are more like pointy. And Wormwood also is super, super bitter. If you could just like, take like a little nibble of it in the field, you'll be able to tell the difference. Even though this does have some bitter principles too, it's not as bitter as Wormwood. So that just like mouth, sucking like dry bitterness is individual is a uh, particular to wormwood here is a close-up of the mugwort plant so you can see it has those divided leaves like i was talking about and the edges are pointy not rounded so it comes to a point and again the leaves are alternate on the stem so there's just one leaf that comes off at each point and we don't have the flowers right now, but they're not super conspicuous anyway. Next to me here, this little white flower is yarrow. And the Latin name for this is Achilla millifolium. And you should know what I'm going to say next. It's one of my favorite herbs, of course. So this one isn't used so much culinarily, but it is a really great medicinal herb. and like bergamot has tons and tons of uses and I think is a really great first aid tool and something that everyone should just know about for medicinal purposes. Yarrow, culinarily, you can use the leaves sparingly as a seasoning, but they are very bitter. So you don't need a lot of them and it has like some herby flavor, you know, some like aromatics, but the predominant flavor is just bitterness. So, uh, not the most popular seasoning, but you can try it out, especially with like fatty dishes or meats or that kind of thing. Otherwise, you can use it for tea and you want to use the flowering tops, so the flowers and the leaves as well. 
And like with bergamot, I usually just like clip off the top. So I use the stem, flower, and leaves and make tea out of that or make it into a tincture. Or you can make like a salve or an oil, infused oil or something like that. And medicinally, most famously, it's a wound treatment. So the Latin name Achilla actually comes from Achilles, who was said to treat his soldiers with this herb. So you can kind of remember that it's a wound herb by remembering the Latin name. So you can use just the leaves for a wound treatment, or as I mentioned, you can make like an infused oil or a sap or something like that to apply to wounds. And it's antibacterial, it's a styptic, so it stops the bleeding. And this is one of the best plants, just the best like anything really that I know of for stopping bleeding. At least that's available to like non-medical professionals. I've had many instances in the woods where I'll cut myself and I'll just take a little piece of the light leaf and stick it right on there. If you have water, you can kind of crush it up with some water. Some people like to chew it up and stick it on there, but you know, just keep in mind that your mouth has bacteria in it. So if you're trying to antibacterialize the wound, then introducing bacteria from your mouth is not really the best practice. So yeah, you can just like use the leaf basically as it is. And it has all these little serrations and little hairs that come off of it. So those work to stop the bleeding. I've been lucky enough to not need it for serious injuries, but you know, some friends of mine have used it for like axe and saw injuries and have attested to its healing powers. Besides that, it's again, something that's great for the uterus. So using it as a uterine tonic, either for painful menstruation or bloating, cramping, PMS. This is another plant that should be avoided in early pregnancy, so be aware of that. Because of its action on the uterus, it can cause contractions, so definitely want to avoid it if you're pregnant, especially early on. Another use is it's a diaphoretic, so it breaks your fever basically by making you sweat. So if you make like a hot tea of this and it helps if you bundle yourself up in blankets, but you don't really need to. You'll just get like super, super sweaty. And then eventually after, usually for me, it happens within like 10 hours, my fever will break and I'll feel a million times better than I did before. So this is a really great plant to have around in winter time when you're getting colds and flus and other types of sicknesses. It really helps you get over that. Also, I mentioned it's a bitter plant. Like other bitter plants, it's great for digestion. It helps you absorb more nutrients. It makes your digestion more efficient. And bitter plants also just kind of have a general effect on your whole body because they stimulate your, what's called your vagus nerve, which runs from your, basically from your brain down your spine and it hits all these major organs and it helps with your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the kind of relax, the rest and digest one so it's a great plant not just for affecting the digestive system but affecting really your whole body uh, it's also an antifungal it is a really strong antibacterial and if you drink it cold it will help flush out uh, UTIs so yarrow yeah, does a lot of things and I really recommend looking into it more and learning more about it and harvesting some of your own and trying it out and like I said it's bitter so it does take some getting used to, like drinking it as a tea, but you can make a tincture of it and then you just have to take like a little, you know, teaspoon or a few drops of it or whatever the dosage for you would be in that situation. So as tincture, it's a lot easier to swallow, literally, if you have a trouble with the bitterness. But yeah, I re definitely recommend that you give it a try. To identify yarrow, you want to, like with all plants, look at the leaves and the flowers. The leaves are these long, narrow, finely divided leaves that look quite a bit like feathers. And the flowers are white and usually five petaled. It's a bunch of little tiny white, usually five petaled flowers. And it grows in what's called a corum. So if you look at the growth pattern here, it basically means that one little stem branches off and then that branches off more and then it turns into a flower at the very tip. 
So that will help you tell it apart from things in the carrot family which grow in umbels and there's some poisonous members of the carrot family that you don't want to confuse this with, for example poison hemlock. So they are easy to tell apart but it does require you to look at the details. You want to do that really for every plant that you harvest. So here's a close-up of yarrow and I'll show you the side view here of the corum. So you can see what I'm talking about with the staggering of one stem coming off at each point along the main stem and then those splitting off even more and at the tip there being a little, usually a five petaled flower. And by the way this yarrow is a little old so it's not really the best example or clearest example of what the flowers look like but you get the idea. And here is a close-up of the leaves so like I was saying, they're finely divided and look quite a lot like feathers and they're long and narrow and they have a nice like clean herby smell. Okay, that concludes my video about common summer herbs. I hope that you found it helpful and informative and thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for notifications. It's a great way to help me out for free. But if you do happen to have a couple extra dollars a month, you can head over to my Patreon. The link is in the description box down below. And on there you can pledge a monthly dollar amount to help me keep producing these free informative videos for you all. So if you're able to do that, that'd be awesome. If not, that's fine too. Either way, happy foraging!